Sapul na naman yata kami dito. Sino sa inyo ready ng masapul? Sino sa inyo ready ng mapatamaan? Alam nyo, na, na, na ano nga ako eh, iba talaga ang power ng Holy Spirit, no? Biro mo ha, natamaan ka na, excited ka pa. Tinamaan ka na, ano? Tinamaan ka na ng salita ng Panginoon. Excited na ako, pasto. Parang excited na tayo matamaan. Ganun kasi tayo dito sa Gia Kamanaba. Willing tayo magpaturo. Para tayo napaka-hot natin. Humble, open, and teachable. Hindi lang tayo mapagpakumbaba. Open tayo. At hindi lang tayo open. Teachable din tayong lahat. So, alam ko, excited na, excited na ho kayo to receive God's Word. So, if you are inter- uh, if you are ready na, mga kapatid, open up your Bibles to Psalms 139, verse 7 to 8. Psalms 139 verse 7 to 8. And as you are turning, mga kapatid, paalala ho, mamaya, grow track, 8 o'clock in the, uh, o'clock in the evening. Okay? Misa may nagtatanong sa akin, Pastor, paano ba ako magsaserve? Ano bang pwede kong gawin para i-develop yung aking faith? Well, mag-register ka sa grow track. Okay? So our team will, will put that link in the chat. Okay? Maybe later on. So tapusin yung service, mga kapatid. Hallelujah! Praise Jesus! Parang kailangan ko huminga ng konti. Oh. Kailangan, kailangan buwiluan natin ito. Matindi ito ang sasabihin ng Lord. Matindi ito. Bantayan nyo yung mga viewers ay magugulat kay mamaya. 100 na lang yan. <laughs> Marinig pa lang nila yung title na. Anyway. Amen. Psalms 139 verse 7 to 8. Look at this. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, God, you are there. And if I go down to the grave, you are there. It speaks about the omniscience of our God, that our God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. Ulitin ko natin sa verse 7. Ang sabi ng psalmist, hindi ko matatakasan ng iyong espiritu. I can never get away from your presence. Kahit ako'y pumunta ng langit, nandun ka. Ako man ay mamatay, nandun ka pa rin. <laughs> you are everywhere. I want to talk to you about on this subject, Mind your distance. Tapikin nyo nga yung katabi nyo kung medyo malapit-lapit siya sa inyo. Sabi mo sa kanya, mind your distance. Mind your distance. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Mind your distance. Sa panahon ng pandemic na uso ang social distance, I believe that all of us can relate to this subject, mind your distance. Most of us, kung hindi man lahat mga kapatid, I believe I kumikilala na sa ating Panginoon. Lahat tayo tinanggap natin ang ating Panginoon bilang Panginoon, Diyos at tagapagligtas ng ating buhay. At kung hindi mo pa tinatanggap si Kristo, I want to challenge you, accept Jesus right now. Hindi relihiyon, kundi tanggapin si Jesus, papasukin siya sa iyong puso, at hayaan na ang Diyos ang manguna sa iyong buhay. And we all have our salvation story. Lahat tayo kumilala. Lahat tayo binago ng ating Panginoon. May mga tao, dramatic ang pagbabago. Pero may mga tao namang gradual lang. Kung baga, unti-unti. May mga tao na parang sa isang iglap na wala lahat ng kanilang bisyo, binago ang kanilang karakter, binago ang kanilang buhay. Pero may mga tao naman na dahan-dahan. Yung mga 20 years ng Christian, nabawasan na ng isang kasalanan. Isa lang talaga. I'm just kidding. I'm just teasing. But our testimony, kahit na gradual man, o kahit na dramatic ang pagbabago sa buhay mo, Our story ay merong similarity at some point. Kasi lahat tayo may turning point. Lahat tayo dumating sa buhay natin na nagkaroon ng turning point ang ating buhay that when we hit the rock bottom, we encounter the rock in the bottom. Nakilala natin ang Kristo na nagbago ng ating buhay. Si Jesus na nagtransition sa atin from mess to message. Si Jesus na nagtransition sa atin from test to testimony. Si Jesus na nag-transition sa atin from trials to triumph. I'm preaching early, mga kapatid. And I believe that all of us can relate to this because this is our own story. We all encountered the grace of God. And I don't know about you, I am so grateful, I am so honored, and I am so, so, so grateful na ako ay niligtas ng ating Panginoon not because of what I can do, but because of what Jesus did for me at the cross that He died, buried, and rose again from the dead. Na ang sabi ng John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Kaya lahat ng Kristiyano bigaten kasi binigay ni Kristo ang kanyang begotten Son. For what reason? So that whoever, kahit sino, 
engineer, architect, janitor, CEO, presidente, politician, whoever that will believe in Him. Meaning, lahat tayo undeserved. Ang grace unmerited. Ang grace ng Lord unearned. Hindi mo pinaghirapan, hindi mo pinagtrabahuhan, hindi mo pinagpawisan, binigay ng libre ng Diyos sa bawat isa sa atin. Hindi mo siya inabot, pero siya ang umabot sa iyo. Iniahong ka ng Diyos mula sa lalim ng hukay na iyong kinalalagyan. Pero napansin niyo ba mga kapatid, tayo takbo ng takbo palayo kay Lord, pero si Lord habol ng habol sa atin. God's grace is always chasing us down. Ha, ulitin ko ulit, mukhang lahat ng tao rito sanctified na eh. Mukhang yung mga nakikinig sa akin sanctified na hindi na nag amen Kasi ako ang testimony ko mga kapatid, marami mga pagkakataon sa buhay ko na pinipilit kong takbuhan ang pagtawag ng Lord. Pinipilit nating takbuhan ang mga purposes ng ating Panginoon. Takbo ka ng takbo palayo, ang Diyos naman habol ng habol sa bawat isa sa atin. Pero ang Diyos natin is so gracious, ulitin ko lang, ang Diyos is so merciful, hindi siya parang pulis na nagahabol sa kriminal. Ang Diyos ay tatay na naghahabol sa kanyang anak. Na tayo ay kanyang hinahabol, tayo ay kanyang chase down para ibalik sa kanyang kalooban. Think about this. God has the best interest in mind for all of you. Ang ganda ng intensyon, ang ganda ng kalooban ng Diyos para sa bawat isa sa atin. But, think about this. Maganda ang interest ng Panginoon and yet we still run away from Him can understand, isn't it? Ang ganda ng intensyon ng Diyos, pero tayo, takbo pa rin tayo ng takbo. Tinatawag mo siyang Lord ng buhay mo, pero hindi mo naman ginagawa ang pinapagawa niya sa'yo. It's interesting to me that we call our God Lord, pero hindi naman natin ginagawa ang pinapagawa ng Diyos. At kung hindi mo ginagawa ang pinapagawa ng Diyos, ba't mo pa siya tanawag na Lord? Kung ang Diyos ng buhay mo ay Diyos mo lang kapag linggo, hindi siya Lord talaga. One-seventh Lord lang siya. Isang beses lang sa isang linggo. Hindi siya 100% ng ating buhay. Amen? We call Him Lord, but we don't do what God has called us to do. Marami sa atin nagsimula tayong maka-Diyos, <laughs> pero nag-end up na walang Diyos. Nagsimula tayong malapit sa Kanya, passionate sa paglilingkod, passionate tayo to share the gospel. Talagang kahit sino makilala natin, talagang isushare natin ang gospel. Pero tanungin nga natin ang ating katabi, lag- lagay nyo nga sa chat, what happened to us? Hindi nagbago ang Diyos. <laughs> Parang may hugot siya tayo na, what happened to us? Mahal, mahal naman kita nun na. Pero bakit ako lubas? Sadin iniwan mo ko, ba't mo ko pinagpalit? Pangit ba ako? Kapalit, palit ba ako? Hindi, no, 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 no. At at some point in our Christian life, ang Diyos hindi nagbago, gracious pa rin siya, but at some point in our life, we lost our passion for Jesus. At some point in our life, we lost our enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Okay, we lose our enthusiasm. <laughs> Yasm. <laughs> Amen. For our God who saved us and gave His life for all of us. And just natin is so good. God wants you to be close to Him. Gusto ng Diyos mapalapit ka sa Kanya. And during this pandemic season, talagang lumabas. Amen? Ang pwedeng mangyari sa isang krisyano. Maraming krisyan, I'm not judging, pero maraming krisi, krisyan, they get close to God during the pandemic season, pero marami din krisyan ang napalayo sa ating Panginoon. In case you forgot, and yung boses ko medyo hindi na maganda ang lagay because, you know, we, we worship earlier, but seventh months, we are still in this pandemic season. Hindi ba kayo grateful buhay pa tayo? Let us sing it for a while. Seven months, more than seven months, in the pandemic season, we're still alive. But the question is, is your passion still alive? Boy, pa tayo. Pero ang passion mo ba for Jesus is still alive? Yung enthusiasm mo ba sa yung ginagawa is still alive? Because one thing I've noticed, mga kapatid, ang mga sitwasyon sa ating buhay will steal our joy. Bad situation, bad circumstance has the potential na nakawin ng joy nakawin ng passion natin sa ating Panginoon. Yung dating vibrant na relationship, yung dating dynamic na relationship natin sa Panginoon ay napalitan ng complacency. Now, many Christians, I'm not judging anyone, have become complacent in their relationship with God. But thank God for our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Hindi mo pwedeng takasan ang grace ng Lord. You can go outside God's will, but you can never go outside God's grace. Ang grace ng Lord is so huge. Ang grace ng Lord is so undeserving na kahit tayo ang pinakamasamang tao, hindi natin po pwedeng takasan ang grace ng ating Panginoon. Pero pwede kang tumakas at lumabas sa will ng Panginoon. At kung ikaw ay lalabas sa will ng Lord, tatandaan nyo ito. Kapag ikaw ay outside God's will, laging pabagsak yan. Kapag ikaw ay laging God's will, laging pababayan. Pag ikaw ay laging labas sa kalooban ng Lord, laging palugi yan. Kay Kristo, may benefit. Kay Kristo, may joy. Kay Kristo, may peace. Pero outside His will, pabagsak, papangit, pababa, palugi. And yet, and yet, we still, it seems like we still wanted to get away with God. Or get away from God rather. Kaya nga sabi ng Psalms 139, you can never escape from His Spirit. Kahit anong gawin mong paglayo, ang Diyos, lagi nandyan pa rin. And you can never, sabi ng Scripture again, you can never get away from His presence. Hindi matatakasan ang presensya ng Panginoon. Kahit saan ka tumakbo, nandun ang ating Panginoon. But sometimes we want to live outside God's will. And I want to illustrate this with the life of Jonah. Wala na sigurong iba pang runaway prophet or runaway Bible character na pwede nating maging illustration with this thought about trying to get outside God's will. Kung kilala niyo si Jonah, mga kapatid, si Jonah po ay isang propeta. Actually, si Jonah ay kinukonsider ng minor prophet. Hindi, hindi ibig sabihin na konti lang kaya niyang gawin, but, but it's because ang kanyang account sa scripture ay maiksi lang. Ang Jonah has only four chapters and 48 verses, so maiksi lang ang buhay ni Ni Jonah, and yet, there's a lot of things that we can learn from the life of Jonah. But I would like to, to emphasize these first three verses in Jonah chapter 1, kung paano siya tinawag ng ating Panginoon. Look at this. Ang sabi ng verse 1, Jonah chapter 1, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Ano instruction ng Panginoon? Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me, but, but Jonah, huh, si Lord, tinawag si Jonah para mag-preach ng gospel sa Nineveh. But instead of following God, instead of sumunod sa Panginoon, which is, yun yung ginagawa nyo lagi, di ba? Sumusunod kay Lord, hindi kayo sumusuway. And di ba naman natin, hindi pa naman propeta. You're so stupid. Bakit di ka sumunod sa Panginoon? But look at this, sabi ng verse 3, but Jonah, instead of running to God, he ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. Now, hindi siya sa Tarshish pinapapunta, kundi sa Nineveh. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. Bear that in mind. And after paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee. To flee. Para takasan ang Panginoon. <laughs> As if, kaya mong takasan ang Panginoon. Ang instruction sa kanya, kailangan mong mag-preach sa Nineveh. So, ibig sabihin, may calling si Jonah. And I don't know if you believe this, may calling ka din. Uh, and some of us, sinasabi natin, Pastor, gusto ko rin magkaroon ng calling katulad kay Jonah. Yung ganun kalinaw, yung naririnig ko, alam niyo mga kapatid, sa totoo lang, ang pagsasalita ng Diyos, hindi question. Lagi nagsasalita ang Diyos. Ang question, lagi ka man naikinig. There's a big difference right there. Kahit magsalita ang Panginoon, hindi ka naikinig. You can never hear God's calling. But anyway, si John na tinawag ng ating Panginoon and John na was given the honor of preaching the word of God sa Ninive. Yun nga lang, yung ipipreach ni Jonah ay hindi yung si Jesus mahal kayo lahat. Ah, ah, ang, pinip, ang sinasabi ng Lord kay Jonah, sabihin mo sa mga taga Ninive, mag-repent sila kasi after 40 days, lulupigin ko ang buong Ninive. Pupunta ka sa isang lugar na hindi ka kilala. Ipipreach mo, magsisi na kayo, mamamatay kayo lahat. In other words, sabihin mo sa kanila, turn to God or be burned. Turn or burn. Your choice. Ibig sabihin, si Jonah ang ginamit ng Panginoon na magsilbing wake-up call sa Nineveh. Si Jonah ang ginamit ng Panginoon para magsilbing alarm clock. Sinasabi ng Lord kay Jonah, sound the alarm. Wake them up. Preach the gospel to them and allow them to repent. But, hmm, instead of going to Nineveh, 
Jonah ran away. Now the question is, why? Hindi kayo makaimin kasi, alam ko na yan. Grade 2 pala ako, alam ko na yung story ni Jonah. But that, does it occur to you, mga kapatid, why? Why did Jonah run away from God? Because sometimes, ang dali lang natin i-judge si Noah, sabihin natin, Jonah, propeta ka pa naman, anak ka pa naman ng Panginoon, bakit mo tinakbuhan ang pagtawag ng Panginoon? But at some point in our life, may Jonah sa puso natin that we don't know? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, may Jonah ka sa puso. Paano ko yung Jonah nililigawan mo, no? kaya crush mo, pangalan Jonah, may Jonah ka sa puso mo. Anyway, <laughs> amen? Some of us have Jonah. Now, to understand this, historical context is very important. Alam nyo ba na ang Nineveh ay capital ng Assyria? At alam nyo ba na ang Nineveh ay present-day Iraq? At alam nyo ba kung saan ang Nineveh? Kung nasaan ang ISIS ngayon. Yung town ng mga ISIS, yung home ng ISIS is the Nineveh of our time. Ang Nineveh, mga kapatid, is great in wealth. Ang Nineveh, great in power. Ang Nineveh, great in dominion. Grabe! Magandang city. Yung nga lang, listen to me, this is very important, nga lang ang, ang Nineveh, barbaric country. Barbaric community. Pag sinabing barbaric, halang ang kaluluwa. Lahat ng kanilang mga kaaway, sinusunog nila ng buhay. Lahat ng kanilang kaaway, tinatapyasan nila ng balat. Lahat ng kanilang kaaway, tinatapyasan nila ng ilong, tinatapyasan nila ng labi, barbaric. Halos kainin na, yung ulo mo pupugutin, tapos yung, yung skal mo o yung bungo mo, ibabandera sa lahat, gagawin piramid. Ganun sila kabarbarik. Sinusunog nila ng buhay ang kanilang mga kaaway. And then, knowing na ang, na ang Nineveh ay barbarik, sabi ng Lord sa iyo, Jonah, pumunta ka sa Nineveh. Pagsabihan mo itong mga taong ito, now I understand. Bakit parang may hesitation si Jonah to go to there? Number one, Lord, it's dangerous. Lord, it's too risky. Lord, it's kind of difficult. Kasi, kasi ang Nineveh ay mortal na kahaway natin. Pag pumunta pala ako doon, dedo na kagad ako. But again, Jonah was asked by God to preach to their enemy. Oo! Oo! Is it interesting to you, mga kapatid, na sometimes gusto ng Lord mag-preach ka ng gospel sa mga kahaway mo? Ang sabi ng Lord sa mga early disciples, go to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria. Samaria is their enemy. And even to the ends of the earth and preach the gospel. Wala akong problema na mag-preach ng gospel sa kapitbahay ko. Wala akong problema na preach ng gospel sa aking mga pamilya pero sa kaaway ko. Pwede nila akong patayin, pwede nila akong pugutan, pwede nila akong sunugin. Why would I preach to them? But you know what? Maybe this is a word for somebody. God wants you to preach to your enemy. Lagay niyo sa comment section, preach to your enemy. Tapikin mo yung katabi mo, preach to your enemy. Invite your enemy to church. I-share niyo yung live stream niyo sa inyong mga kaaway. Ang sabi ng Lord kay Jonah, preach to Nineveh at i-encourage niyo silang magsisi at tumalikod sa kanilang mga kasalanan. And yet, now I understand it is difficult. Now I understand it's, it's too risky, but it's not an excuse to disobey the Lord. Kahit mahirap ang pinapagawa ng Panginoon, hindi yan excuse para hindi natin sundin ang pinapagawa ng ating Panginoon. Come on, can I get an amen mga kapatid? And Jonah ran away. And you know what? This is our own sto- this is our own story. Lahat tayo at some point, as I said, lahat tayo may Jonah sa ating puso. Na kapag may pinapagawa ang Panginoon sa ating gusto natin takbuhan. Kapag may calling ang Panginoon sa ating gusto natin takasan. Pero mga kapatid, I don't want to insult your intelligence. All of us are smart enough to realize you cannot run away from God. <laughs> Yung kausap ko, matatalino naman siguro, no? Hindi na natin kailangan ipagdildilan pa, mga kapatid. Lahat tayo are smart enough to realize hindi mo pwedeng matakbuhan ng Panginoon. You can run away from God, but you cannot outrun God. Sige, takbuhan mo ng takbuhan ng Panginoon, pero hindi mo siya matatakbuhan. Run all you want, but God is faster. Run all you want, but God is faster. His grace will chase you down. His grace is going to catch up on you. And we have a choice, mga kapatid, sa anumang pinapagawa ng Lord sa atin. This is the first Sunday of the eighth year of this church. And I believe this message is so powerful. 
as a reminder to all of us, mahirap man, may pandemic man, may COVID man, may sakit man, may kakulangan man, may struggle man, sinasabi ng Panginoon sa atin, whatever He is assigning us to do, we shall do it with all our hearts. Gawin natin, lakaran natin ang kalooban ng ating Panginoon. Yes, mahirap because there's a cause of following Jesus. But there's also a cause of not following Him. And the question is, which cost are you willing to pay? Sa case ni Jonah, he's willing to pay the price of disobedience. Not of obedience. Kasi God knows, or should, should I say, Jonah knows na gusto siya papuntahin ng Lord sa Nineveh, but instead of going to Nineveh, gusto niya pumunta ng Tarshish, which is a complete disobedience to God. And is willing to pay the price. I risk. Mas okay na sa akin sumuway kay Lord kaya pumunta sa mga barbaric community na yan. I can't. I can't do that. British kasi si Johnny. Jonah is willing to pay the price not of obedience but disobedience. Ang sabi ng verse 3, let's go back to that again. Ang sabi ng verse 3, Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. Watch this. Watch this. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. And after paying the fare, tignan nyo ha, namasahay pa siya going there. He went aboard, sailed for Tarshish, and flee from the Lord. Number one, how would I know, mga kapatid, that Jonah is willing to pay the price of his obedience? Number one, ang Tarshish ay limang beses na mas malayo kesa sa kanyang kinakalagyan. Ang Tarshish ay limang beses na mas malayo kaysa Ninive. Pinapapunta siya sa Ninive, 550 kilometers lang. Pero pumupunta pa siya sa Tarshish na 2,500 kilometers. We, don't get, hindi nyo nag Willing siyang magpagod at pumunta sa mas malayo para lang makalayo sa ating Panginoon. Number two, na na-observation na nakita ko dito. Ang pagsuway, may transportation din. <laughs> Kasi ang sabi ng scripture, pagdating niya sa Jopa, may bangka na nagaantay sa kanya, hindi papuntang Ninive, kundi papunta ng Tarshish. Kung saan niya gustong pumunta para makalayo sa Diyos. Have you noticed mga kapatid that when you want to run away from God, napansin niyo ba kung gusto niyo yung takbuhan ng Panginoon, laging may bangkang nagaantay sa inyo. Lagi may bangkang nagaantay sa inyo para isakay kayo ng jablo palayo sa will ng ating Panginoon. Kapag ka gusto mong sumuway kay Lord, laging may isang upuan na bakante. Okay, hindi pala. Isa na lang, lalarga na. Sabi ni Satan. At ikaw, parang feeling mo, parang sign na to. Nakareserve sa akin yung upuan. Ito na yata ang sinyalis ng Panginoon. Have you noticed mga kapatid that if you want to run away from God, Satan loves to provide a transportation for you para makapun... Hindi lang pagpunta sa will ni Lord ang may transportation. Kahit sa pagsuway, nagpo-provide si Satan ng transportation para makalayo ka. There's always a boat going to the other direction. But it will never bring you to your destination. Never. How would I know? May bangka papuntang Tarshish, pero we know the story. Nakarating ba siya ng Tarshish? No. He didn't make it. Kasi sa gitna pa lang, pinigilan na siya ng Panginoon. May bangka, pero hindi ka makakarating. <laughs> Namasahe ka, pero hindi ka makakarating. Umasa kang makakasal kayo, pero... Umasa kang mahal kanya, pero... <laughs> May lalaki, pero hindi siya yung para sa'yo. May babae, pero... <laughs> there is a boat ready to take him away from there. Ang bangka, ready, listen to me. Hindi niya hinantay yung bangka. May bang pagdating niya pa lang, say na siguro to. Oh. May bangka. There's a ready boat. But the ready way is not always the right way. There may be a lot of option but there's only one way. Marami mang option pero meron lang isang daan para makamit natin ang mga pangako na meron lang isang daan papunta sa blessing ng Panginoon. Minsan may transportation nakakaakit sumakay, may opportunity, akala mo blessing, pero ingat ka. Hindi lahat ng lalaki, God's best. 
Hindi lahat ng babae God's best. Hindi lahat ng trabaho para sa iyo. Hindi lahat ng promotion makakabuti para sa iyo. God's ways are always better than our ways. His thoughts are always higher than our thoughts and his plans are always greater than our plan. Even our disobedience has a transportation too. And number three, disobedience will cost you more. Think about this. Ayokong, ayokong maging prideful sa inyo, ha? Pero think about this. Logical lang. Sa totoo lang, mas madaling sumunod kaysa sumuway. <laughs> mas madaling sumunod kay Lord kaysa sumuway. Mas madaling kalabanin si Satanas kaysa kalabanin ng Diyos. Kasi kapag kinalaban mo si Satanas, pwede kang tumawag sa Diyos. Pero pag Diyos ang kinalaban mo, sinong tatawagan mo? Wala kang tatawagan. But sometimes, mas gusto pa nating mag-disobey sa Panginoon kahit na it will cost you more. Ang sabi ng scripture, nung nakakita siya ng bangka, nagbayad siya ng pamasahe. Hindi na to kailangan logical explanation. Five times na mas malayo yung pupuntahan niyan. Ibig sabihin, five times na mas mahal yung pamasahe niyan. But he's willing to pay the price nang mas mataas, matakbuhan. Actually, sabi ng, ng ancient map, the farthest that you can go is Tarshish at that time. Kasi minsan, pag talagang tumatakbo ka, pumupunta ka sa pinakamalayo. Remember the prodigal son? Na sabi ng Bible, nung nakuha niya lahat ng kanyang mana, he goes, he went to a distant country. As if hindi tayo kayang habuli ng ating Panginoon. But guess what? Disobedience will cost you more. It will cost you more. There is a cost of following Jesus, but there is a higher cost of not following Him. Kasi kapag sumuway ka sa Panginoon, may confusion. Kapag sumuway ka, may conflict. Kapag sumuway, may loss, may pain, may regret. Kapag sumuway tayo, may disaster. If you think about it, mas madaling sumunod kesa hindi sumunod. Mas madaling magpatawad kaysa magtanim ng sama ng loob. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, patawarin mo na yan. Pero minsan, kahit alam natin na mas mataas ang presyo ng pagsuway, dun pa rin tayo sa pagsuway. Think about this. Think about this. Tawa ako dito eh. Ano yung nakakatawa mga kresyano? Pagdating sa pagsuway, napaka-creative natin. Pagsuway, creative. Alam mo nang, alam mo nang mali yung relasyon na yan. Tignan nyo, creative kang magtago. <laughs> Gumagawa ka pa ng fake account. Hallelujah. Alam mong hindi yan, Christian. Alam mong hindi yan ang kalooban ng Panginoon. Pero, pero napaka-creative natin sa pagtatago sa mga leader natin. Napaka-creative natin sa paggawa ng mga excuses. There is a higher cost of not following Jesus. Bakit, bakit mo tinatanggalan ang sarili mo ng peace kung kaya mo namang magkaroon ng peace when you follow the Lord? Again, mas... Mas madali magpatawad kaysa magtanim ng sama ng loob. Kasi kapag, ka, tingin nyo, pag may kagalit ka, kung saan siya naroon, wala ka dun. Pag tumatawa siya, hindi ka dapat tumawa kahit nakakatawa naman yung joke. Because, you know, may pride ako eh. May ego ko eh. Sa totoo lang, mas madaling mag-serve kay Lord kaysa magbigibingihan sa Diyos. Mas madaling umatin ng link up kaysa magdahilan sa leader kung bakit hindi. Think about this. Diba? Pag nagdadahilan ka, di ka makakaatin. Ang dami mo, creative ka pa sa pag-iisip niyan. Yung lola ko po kasi, masama ang loob. Yung lola mo, walang kamalay-malay. Nadadamay pa. Because we wanted to go outside His will. We want to go outside the will. I, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody, mga kapatid. Di ko alam kung may kausap pa ako dito. I don't know. Let me know in the chat if, if this is helping anybody. We know that it's more costly na sumuway tayo sa Panginoon. We know na mas magandang nananalangin tayo sa every decision that we make. And yet, kinuha mo yung trabaho na hindi ka nanalangin. And yet, sinagot mo siya na hindi mo siya pinag-pray. Kapatid, listen to me. Without prayer, that is a distraction in the making. It is a distraction waiting to happen. Dapat nga tayo mga Kristiyano, tayo yung bilib na bilib sa kapangyarihan ng panalangin. Pero para bagang ang mga kresyano pa, ang duda sa epekto at kapangyari, 
feeling natin yung panalangin parang experimental drug lang. Na kapag ininom ko, gagaling kaya ako o hindi. Kapag nagpray kaya ako, masusulo siya ng... Bakit? Hindi, ang prayer hindi experimental, gra- uh, experimental drug. The prayer has proven to be the most effective thing that we can do kapag dumaraan tayo sa pagsubok. And yet, the point is this. Sometimes, mas pipiliin pa nating wag manalangin, mas pipiliin pa nating tumakas sa Panginoon, wag sumunod sa ating Panginoon. Katulad ni Jonah, mas malapit yung Nineveh, mas mura ang pamasahe, dadalhin ka ng Panginoon because He wants you to be in His will. You're going to help a lot of people and yet, mas pinili pa niyang sumuway sa Panginoon. Why is it? Na parang tayo, mas gusto pa nating sumuway sa ating Panginoon. Nasa na? Nasa na? yung epekto ng pagmamahal ng Panginoon sa ating buhay. Nasaan na yung gigil natin sa paglilingkod natin sa ating Panginoon? Nasaan na yung apoy ng paglilingkod natin sa ating Panginoon? Nasaan na yung apoy na gusto nating paglingkuran ng ating Panginoon? Diyos pa ba ang pinaglilingkuran natin? O comfort na natin? We have to be reminded, mga kapatid, I know this is a, an uncomfortable message for most of us, but God wants you to be passionate again in obeying what God has called you to do. Be passionate again in serving the Lord. I know I've been asked, asked a lot of times, Pastor, how can I get my passion back? Kailan ko ba pwedeng mabalik yung passion ko? Dati ganito ako, pero ngayon parang wala na akong passion to serve. Wala na akong excitement to serve. Ginagawa ko na lang to out of duty. Ginagawa ko na lang to out of obligation. Pastor, I think I lost my passion. But what if hindi na wala? What if ninakaw ang passion? How can I get it back, Pastor? Because God wants us to choose the cause, not of disobedience, but to choose the cause of following Him. Mahirap, difficult, risky, parang tingin natin, pagdating natin sa Nineveh, pupugutan tayo ng ulo, but God wants you to be passionate, not in disobedience, to be creative, not in disobedience, but be passionate in the Lord. Ikaw pa ba ang salt and light of this world? O ikaw na nahahawaan nila? Alam ba na mga ka-office mate mo na Christian ka? Alam ba na mga classmates natin na si Lord ang tinataas natin? Bakit parang naging thermometer na tayo at hindi na tayo thermostat? Bakit parang instead na dapat yung laman ng puso mo ang nakakaapekto sa paligid mo, bakit parang yung paligid mo nakakaapekto sa laman ng puso mo? Something is wrong. When we run away from God, katulad ni Jonah, he made a lot of stupid decisions. A lot. Dati pinipresh ko to madalas, no? May nagtatanong sa akin, Pastor, bakit ganun, no? Pagka lumalayo ako kay Lord, parang nagiging sunod-sunod yung mga maling desisyon ko sa buhay. Simple lang ang sagot dyan, Brad. Kasi kapag lumayo ka sa Diyos, para ka na rin lumayo sa source ng wisdom. At pag wala kang source ng wisdom, paano ka magkakaroon ng wisdom to follow Him? Para kang lumayo sa source of peace. Para kang lumayo sa source of joy. Kaya kapag malayo ka kay Lord, tumatakbo ka palayo sa Kanya, wala kang peace, wala kang joy, wala kang passion, wala lahat, walang, pati Himala, wala. Amen. Instead of running away, instead of running from God, why don't we run to God? Why don't we run with God? Kasi yun ang mas maganda. Ang sabi ng Revelation chapter 2, alam ng Diyos ang ating mga gawa. Ang sabi niya, I know your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they were apostles and are not. And found them liars. In other words, alam ng Diyos ang lahat ng pagpapagal mo. Alam ng Diyos ang lahat ng nai-invest mo. Alam ng Diyos ang lahat ng ginagawa mo. You have persevered and have patience. You have labored for my name's sake. And have not become weary. God knows your pain. God knows what you are going through. God knows lahat ng sinacrifice mo in following Jesus. But number, verse 4, sabi them, but, but I have this against you. Workaholic ka sa ministry, but you have left your first love. You are active in your ministry, but you left your first love. Leader ka ng church, but you have left your first love. Have you noticed, mga kapatid, na si sense natin sa buhay natin kapag ka gusto pa natin sumunod kay Lord passionately? Marami kasing, napansin nyo to sa mga magulang, di ba? Sumusunod naman, pero nagdadabog. Wala sa loob. 
Hindi gusto ng Lord yung sumusunod tayo pero wala sa loob. Hindi nagtatagal yung ganong paglilingkod. Alagi ko nga sinasabi dito sa church natin, sa team natin at sa inyong lahat. When you want to serve God, serve God with passion. Serve God with enthusiasm. Lagyan mo talaga ng puso. Mamahalin mo na lang ang Diyos. Pusuan mo na. Maglilingkod ka na lang sa Diyos. Pusuan mo na. And nasisense mo kapag may passion ka pa. And nasisense mo rin kapag wala na yung passion. Wala nang kailangan magsabi sa'yo. In fact, akala ng iba passionate ka pa kasi you're always active in the ministry. You're always active in the chat. Always active in sharing the live stream. But you know deep in your hearts, you've lost it. You've lost it. I know, I'm talking to somebody, maybe three people. Siguro tatlong tao lang kausap ko ngayon. And one thing I've noticed sa passion, kapag may passion ka, hindi ka sure kung saan mo nakuha. Tataka ka, ba't yan naman napaka-passionate nito? Grabe, oh. Grabe. Grabe. Alas 7 pa call time, alas 5, nandito ka na. Aga mo naman masyado. Because you don't know. Why? Pero kapag nawala rin yung passion, minsan hindi mo alam kung paano mo mababalik. Kaya nagtataka ka, ba't ako drained? Ang better question, what drained you? Ano umubo sa'yo? Ano nakakapagpa-stress sa'yo? Ano ang mga umuubos ng oras mo? Alam mo naman yung mga activities na kailangan mo ihinto para mabalik yung passion mo eh. Alam mo naman yung mga bagay na dapat mong gawin para makapanumbali ka sa paglilingkod sa ating Panginoon. You know those activities na ginagawa mo that doesn't add value to your life. It's just a waste of time. You know that you are spending too much on social media. You know that you are spending too much on negative people. You know you are spending too much on people that will not help you grow in your faith. Alam mo rin that you are doing a lot of unnecessary busy work. Busy ka but unnecessary. But I want to challenge you right now. Just like Jonah, nasa pier ka, sasakay ka ba ng bangka o susunod ka sa ating Panginoon? Kung walang bangka, alam niyo mas maganda kung walang bangka. Alam sometimes the best way for us to pray is, Lord, eliminate the competition. Tanggalin mo lahat ng competition sa puso, mo, puso ko para makaupo ka sa trono ng puso ko. Eliminate mo lahat ng mga bagay na nakakapagpaaksaya ng oras ko because I want to be passionate in what I do because my passion will shape my decisions in life. My passion will lead you to a happier life. Ang passion will give you a legacy that you will not regret for the rest of your life. And yet, we would rather choose to pay the price of disobedience. Ano yung dati ang definition ko ng passion? Yan yung bagay na nakakapagpagising sa iyo sa umaga. But I believe, mga kapatid, ang passion is more than that. Ang passion, yan yung gumigising sa kaluluwa mo. Hindi lang yung dahilan kung bakit ka gumigising, kundi yung bagay nakakapagpagising sa iyo, yung pag pinag-uusapan yung topic, excited ka. Mga bagay na excited kang ituro kahit di ka naman teacher. Something that you always want to reach search about. Yung lahat, lahat ng laman ng history mo sa browser, yun yung passionate ka. I-check mo yung history browser mo para malaman mo kung ano ang passion. Check mo yung mga pinapanood mo sa YouTube para malaman mo kung anong passion mo. Check mo yung history mo sa Netflix para malaman mo. Come on somebody. Para malaman mo ang passion mo. Magugulat ka. Mas passionate ka pa sa K-pop kaysa kay J-pop. Jesus. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Am I preaching to somebody? Woo, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many among you loves to serve the Lord? Come on, I love serving the Lord. I've been serving the Lord for more than 20 years. And hanggang ngayon, I'm, I'm so passionate in serving the Lord. Lahat tayo gusto natin maging passionate tayo. But think about it. What makes serving the Lord unique? What makes obedience to God unique? Is it because of what you do? Dahil ba nagpipreach ka? Pastor, excited ako to preach. Hindi lahat na nagpipreach passionate. Pastor, excited ako mag-serve. Hindi lahat na nagsiserve passionate. Hindi lahat na tumutugtog passionate. Iba dyan, figurin. Uh-oh. Laging nandyan, pero wala yung passion dyan. Mas kabisado pa yung Korean language kesa sa chords yung kanta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. So, topic mo yung katabi, masabi mo, topic na naman tayo ngayon. Amen. Think about this, what makes serving the Lord unique? Yung director ba natin dito sa page? What makes us, 
Nakaka-excite pag siguro pag ako nag-direct ng service na. Nakaka-excite siguro pag ako ang, ang part ng welcome team. Nakaka-excite siguro pag ako nagpipresh. That's in guarantee. Ang tunay na passion nag stir up. Listen to me, listen to me. Ang tunay na passion nag stir up not because of what you do, but because of who you do it for. Kanino mo ginagawa? You know why I'm passionate to preach? Because I'm doing this not for your approval, but I'm doing this for my Creator. And it's not about how happy you are with my preaching, but it's all about how happy He is. It's not about what I do, but it's all about who I do it for. Para kanino mo ginagawa? Hindi ito sa pagtatrabaho natin, hindi ito sa negosyo natin, kung anong negosyo natin. Siguro pag nagkanegosyo ako ng laundry shop, siguro mas magiging passionate ako kaysa sa negosyo ko ng kwek-kwek. That's in guarantee. It's not about what you do, but who you do it for. Para kanino mo ginagawa? Sino ang dahilan kung bakit patuloy mo siyang ginagawa? It's not what you do that makes the difference. It's who you do it for. And we and what and serving the Lord is unique because I do it for my Creator. I'm not doing it for money. I'm not doing it for paycheck. I'm doing it for the glory of God. And you all know my story. For the past three years, when I started pastoring the church, I've never received an allowance. I'm not making a money doing all these things. But it's not about what I do that makes a difference. But it's all about who I do it for. Para kanino mo ginagawa ang iyong ginagawa? Pag nag-share ka ng live stream, para kanino yan? Pag nag-online church tayo, para kanino yan? It's all about the question of who I do it for. Ask yourself. Kaya siguro hindi tayo passionate. We are doing it to impress somebody. We are doing it for our leaders. We are doing it for our church. Don't do it for the church. Don't do it for your co-worker. Don't do it for your student. Do it for the glory of God. Whatever you do. Do it all for the glory of God. I'm going to close with this. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thank God, He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Whew. So, since God has given you a victory over sin and death, my dear brothers and sisters, verse 58, be strong and immovable. And watch this. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. Leave that in the chat. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Hallelujah. That's why it's different. That's why it's unique. That's why it's rewarding to follow Jesus. Not because of what I do, but because of who I do it for. And since I do it for the glory of God, since I work enthusiastically for the Lord, and I know that my God knows that nothing I do is ever useless. Pagka sa Lord mo ginagawa, hindi sayang. So don't run away from God. Run to God and run with God. Kasi at the end of the day, kung ano ang assignment sa iyo ng Panginoon, kahit na sumuway ka, yun pa rin ang assignment mo. Hindi gagawin ng iba yan. Naalala niyo si Jonah? Pumunta ng Tarshish, sumakay ng bangka, pumunta ng five times na mas malayo, nagbayad ng five times na mas mahal, pero hindi siya nakarating sa destination, bumagsak, so, hindi siya bumagsak, nagkaroon ng bagyo, pinifigure out ng mga crew kung paano hihinto ang bagyo, nagbaba sila ng mga cargo, ng mga bagahe nila, ay huminto ng bagyo, ang sabi ni Jonah, ako tapon nyo, hihinto yan. Noong tinapon si Jonah, huminto ang bagyo, ang sabi ng mga crew, confirm. Ikaw nga. But look at this. Nung si Jonah ay tinapon sa dagat, kinuha siya, God prepared a fish, saan niluwa si Jonah? <laughs> Nineveh. Ara sabi ng Panginoon, preach to Nineveh again. Same assignment. So susuway ka, susuway, kung susuway ka Brad, alam nyo, kung gusto mo talaga sumunod sa Panginoon, dalawang daan. Una, susunod ka kagad, o pangalawa, dadaan ka muna sa tiyan ng, ng fish. But either way, God will make sure that you will fulfill what God has assigned you to do. And as I close, mga kapatid, I'm not judging anyone, not condemning anyone, but I want to encourage you. Choose to follow Jesus. Ngayong eight year, consider your distance. Malayo ka ba kay Lord? O malapit ka sa Kanya? 
Buti pa nga sa kasama natin sa work, mindful tayo sa one meter distance. Kay Lord kaya, always remind yourself, always mind your distance. Lord, am I, to, am I getting away from you? Huwag mo ko hayaan, Lord, na mapalayo sa'yo. Hayaan mo, Lord, na mas lalo akong lumapit sa'yo. Huwag mo ko hayaan man lamig. Hayaan mo ko na lalong maging mainit sa aking paglilingkod. That I don't just do it because it's my responsibility. Na hindi ko to ginagawa dahil inassign ako ng teacher ko. Inassign ako ng ministry head ko. I do it enthusiastically for I know na kapag sa'yo ko to ginawa, hindi nasasayang ang lahat ng pagsunod ko. Hindi nasasayang ang oras ko. Alam kong ginigibap ko ang bakasyon ko every Sunday, uh, 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 may, 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 may choice ako na manood ng Netflix, may choice ako manood ng ibang bagay, but I choose to watch this online service because I want to feed my soul. And I know that my time is not wasted when I choose to feed my soul. My time is not wasted when I know that I have to follow God. My time is not wasted kapag sinusunod ko ang ating Panginoon. Ang oras, hindi sayang kapag pinaglilingkuran mo ang ating Panginoon. Ang oras, hindi sayang kapag ino-offer mo sa ating Panginoon because nothing is wasted when you give it all enthusiastically, passionately for the glory of God. And one thing I love about our God, Jonah doesn't deserve to be saved he didn't. Sumuway siya. And what did you expect? Sa taong sumusuway? Lord, sige, magpadala ka ng pating dapat pinadala mo dyan eh. Lasug-lasugin mo yung mga buto niya eh. Yun ang deserve ni Jonah kasi sumuway siya. Mas pin- but look at this. Look at this. Ang sabi ng verse sa, 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 sa uh, Jonah chapter 4, God prepared, I'm sorry, uh, let's go to Jonah chapter 1, verse 17. Now the Lord provided a huge fish. Marami nagtatalo, balyena ba to o shark? It doesn't, not sure. But definitely, mas malaki sa tao. Pero, 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 pero pwede rin special fish. Na talagang para lang kay Jonah. But look at this, now the Lord provided. Is even the Lord provided a fish? A transportation for him to follow. The Lord provided a huge fish, look at this, to swallow Jonah, not to eat him, not to kill him, but to swallow him and bring him to his destination. That fish is not a punishment. That fish is a rescue. And I don't know who is this for. I believe a lot of people right here, right now needs a rescue. You are in the wrong relationship. You are in the wrong situation. You choose the wrong way. You are in a boat going to Tarshish. God is not deaf. Ask God. Rescue me, God. I need your grace. Alam mo, kahit nasa gitna ka ng pagsuway, you are not outside God's grace. That fish is a picture of His amazing grace. That's what I love about God's grace. We sing about it. We preach about it. We talk about it. But we don't deserve it. Jonah did not deserve that grace. Jonah deserved to die. That's why grace is amazing. That's why grace is too good to be true. But do you know, do you know that Jonah was offended by God's grace? You know the real reason kung bakit hindi siya pumunta ng Nineveh? Hindi dahil tako siya sa mga Ninevites. Hindi dahil tako siya sa ISIS at Iraq. No. The real reason is that these people are too wicked. They deserve to be punished. They deserve to die. And when God wants to save them, He was offended. Because God's grace, ang grace ni Lord mga kapatid sa ating buhay, kung ikaw ang recipient, amazing. Pero pagkaaway mo ang recipient, awful. <laughs> Ang God's grace, 
Pag ikaw ang tatanggap, amazing grace. Pero pag kaaway natin ang tatanggap, Lord, they don't deserve that. They deserve to die. And hey, because of Jonah's disobedience, he deserved to die as well. And yet, because of his grace, God rescued him and God rescued Nineveh. When Jonah preached the gospel, everyone, it is just unexpected, everyone turned to God. Kahit hayop nagfasting, yung king nagfasting, and God, who is so gracious, hindi niya tinuloy yung punishment for Nineveh. The same grace that he received. And when Jonah heard about it, nung narinig ni Jonah na hindi na matutuloy ang punishment sa Nineveh, because sa mga Israelites ay galit na galit sa Nineveh, he was angry. He was offended. Ang sabi niya ng, ng Jonah chapter 4, the change of plan greatly upset Jonah. And he became very angry. So he complained to the Lord. Lord, didn't I say before I left home? That's why I ran away to Tarshish. Kaya nga ako tumakbo ng Tarshish kasi alam ko ito na, na, ito na nga, nangyari na nga eh. Para siya nagtatantrums eh. Sabi niya, kaya hindi ako sumunod sa Tarshish kasi alam ko, nagagawin mo to. Naililigtas mo yung mga kaaway na, namin. I knew that you are merciful. I knew that you are a compassionate God. I knew that you are slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. Alam ko you are eager to turn back from destroying people. Alam ko mabait ka eh. Alam kong compassionate ka. Alam kong merciful ka. Alam ni Jonah. Pero ayaw niya iparana sa iba. That's why he wanted to turn away. Maybe the reason why you want to turn away from God is because His grace is amazing kapag tayo kumukuha pero we don't want others to experience it. Selfishness. Sabi ni Jonah, you're too kind. You're too great. You're too merciful. You're too gracious. Kung sa akin mo binigay, thank you Lord. Kung sa amin mo binigay, glory to God. Pero huwag mo bibigay sa murderers. Huwag mo bibigay yung grace mo sa mga magnanakaw. Huwag silang makakaranas ng grace mo. I know you are so gracious and merciful and, and, and slow to anger and, and these guys will change. And yet, mga kapatid, the runaway prophet and the wicked people of Nineveh, both of them experience God's grace. Consider the distance. Ano man ang layo o lapit mo sa Panginoon, we both deserve God's grace. But I want to challenge you. This is the season that God wants to challenge you to get closer and closer. Every single day, mind your distance. Lord, I'm getting, I'm drifting away from you. I want to get closer to you. I want to read my Bible. I want to pray. I want to worship you. Ayoko lumayo sa iyo, Lord. Gusto ko lalo kaming lumalapit. Gusto ko yung pamilya ko ilapit ko sa iyo. Gusto ko yung yung buong bansa kumilala sa iyo. Gusto ko yung aking pamilya kumilala sa iyo. Gusto ko yung ka-office mate ko kumilala sa iyo. Gusto ko yung boyfriend ko kumilala sa iyo. Gusto ko yung asawa ko kumilala sa iyo. You have to consider the distance. Your intimacy with our God. God wants you to get closer and closer and closer. 8 years. 8 years, guys. Huwag na tayong palayo ng palayo. Dapat tayo palapit ng palapit. Uh, alam nyo, no mga March, excuse pa yan, pandemic, pastor, mahirap, pastor. Well, John has had the same excuses. Mahirap, risky, dangerous. But guess what? Guess what? There is a higher cause of not following Him. That's why I want to encourage you. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Be passionate in what you do. Get closer to Him. Always consider the distance. Always mind your distance to God. Lord, I want to get closer to you. Si Peter, nung, nung nakita niya si Jesus na naglalakad sa tubig, sabi niya, Lord, I want to come to you as well. Because alam ko dito sa lugar ko, sa situation ko, punong-puno ng bagyo. Pero mas gusto ko na, Panginoon, na may bagyo pero kasama kita. 
kesa kesa binabagyo na nga ako hindi pa rin kita kasama I, I, I mind my distance I want to get closer and closer and this is risky walking on water is risky walking on water is not something that people do but I want to consider my distance I want to mind my distance ayoko lumayo sa iyo Panginoon because I cannot live without you you are everything that I need you are everything that I long for you are everything that my life needs Leave that in the chat. I need Jesus. I need Jesus in my life. I need Jesus in my life. I need your grace. I need your mercy. Mga kapatid, ngayon na, piliin na natin. Lord, yes, I want to follow you. Alam niyo, hindi ko nga alam kung ano nangyari sa conversation ni Lord sa kanong fish. Siguro sabi ng Lord, okay, fish, fish one. Sagapin mo si Jonah. Think about it. Yung fish is at this at the exact place kung nasan si Jonah. Tingnan niyo ha. Buti na lang. Uh, buti na lang yung fish hindi nagrebelde. Buti na lang yung fish hindi katulad ni Jonah na nagrun away sa pinapagawa ng Panginoon. Buti pa yung fish sumunod kay Lord at dahil sumunod yung fish naligtas si Jonah. Kapatid, ang pagsunod mo makakaapekto sa ibang tao, makakaapekto sa pamilya mo. Huwag mong takbuhan ang pinapagawa ng Panginoon kasi ikaw ang gagamitin niya para makakilala ang buong kumpanya, makakilala sila sa Panginoon. Amen. Gagamitin tayo ng Lord para punuin ang langit. Fight for your family. Fight for them. Fight for your future. Obey. Say yes, Lord. Don't say no when God says go. Always say yes to the Lord. Always yes. Say yes to His calling. Always walk in the purposes of God in your life. Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity for us to be reminded. Thank you, Jesus, for the power of our obedience. Thank you, Jesus, that when we obey, we know that you will always open the way. Thank you, Lord God, na alam namin that as we get closer and closer and closer to you, you want this church, you want our family, you want this nation, Lord God, to always mind our distance, to always look, Lord God, for an opportunity for us to get close to you. Patawarin mo kami kung hindi po kami nagiging mindful sa distance namin at nagugulat na lang kami that we drifted away from you. Panginoon, talagang ikaw bawat isa sa amin, laging maging mindful. We want to get close to you. We want to be intimate with you. We don't just want to be familiar. We want to be intimate. We want to get closer and closer and closer. At sa mga kapatid ko, Lord God, you know their hearts. You know, and I know, kinakausap mo sila ngayon. Alam ko, may sinasabi ka sa kanila ngayon. Alam kong kinukonvict mo ang kanilang puso ngayon. If they drifted away from you, Lord, tulad ng prodigal son, thank you for an assurance that your arms are open wide to welcome us again. Your arms are open wide para kami yakapin. Ang kamay mo ay open wide para ka i-restore ang lahat ng nawala sa amin. Lord, we will decide right now to say yes to you. Follow you and be with you. We will stop running away from you and start running to you and running with you. All glory belongs to you, God, for everything that you have done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. At kapatid, if you haven't accepted Jesus yet as your Lord and Savior, all your life, wala kang Diyos na kinikilala, all your life, your life is drifted away from Him. But this is another chance that God is giving you na makilala mo siya at ma-acknowledge mo na sa pamamagitan ng kanyang dugo, sa pamamagitan ng kanyang buhay na ibinigay sa atin, tayo ay nagkakamit ng kaligtasan. Panginoon ang akin dalangin sa lahat ng mga kapatid ko na nakarinig nito sa kauna-unahang pagkakataon. Hayaan mong maranasan kanila ngayon. Ipuin niyo po ang kanilang puso. Tanggapin kanila sa kanilang puso. Kung gusto mong tanggapin si Kristo sa iyong puso, sumunod ka sa panalangin nito. Panginoong Yesus, Inaamin ko po ang aking pagkakamali. Inaamin ko po ang aking kasalanan. Panginoon, binubuksan ko ang aking puso. Pumasok ka at maging Panginoon ng aking buhay. Marami pong salamat. Inilalagay ko ang aking pananampalataya na ikaw ay namatay, nilibing, at muling nabuhay para sa akin. Marami pong salamat. Ito ang aking panalangin. 
sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen.